Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to day four recap of the Race to World First. I'm Dranos, joined by Tettles. Yo, what's up? We're yo. back again with another day. How are you feeling today? It's been a, a pretty fun day of stuff to watch. There's been a lot of cool stuff happening all across the uh, the Race to World First with guilds, you know, from, from one all the way down to four, five, and six having some interesting stuff going on, which we will tell you all about very soon, Lee. Are you feeling well rested these days? Dude, I got a, a, a fat 12 hour sleep last night. It, it was good. <laughs> okay, for those who don't know, I don't know if it was like, <laughs> if you could tell on the show yesterday. Nobody could tell. Dratos was actually just dead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that he was going to be sick today. He was so just out of it and tired last night. Dude, I, I, I got back to my hotel room and I just. <laughs> I was down. Right. Down and out. Uh -huh. But speaking of people who aren't down and out, Complexity Limit have re-emerged as the uh, the leaders of the race to World First right now. Yep. They are in first place once again, securing World First Fate Scribe Rokalo today, and have now been working on Kel'Thuzad. Their best pull listed here by WoW Prog or by Warcraft Logs <laughs> is uh is twenty seven percent. Yeah. Phase That's two. a little bit misleading. Yeah. So the uh, the phylactery health was 20%, and then Kel'Thuzad was basically 100%. And the Warcraft Logs algorithm is just phylactery health times 0.9 plus Kel'Thuzad health times 0.1. But in practice... That's not the, how that works. <laughs> the phylactery health goes down really fast in the first two phases, right? It goes from 100 to 60, yeah. then 60 to 20, and then 20 to 0, and you have to kill KT twice from 20 to 0, basically, right? Yeah, pretty much. They're in phase 1.2. Yeah, uh, the thir they're ju they've just started the last the third Kel'Thuzad. Oh, uh, so they're on one point three. Yeah, kind of. So, <laughs> in terms of the total amount of health of both Kel'Thuzad and the remnant that they've had to deal with, they've gotten through a little bit more than half as of right now. And the last phase is notably the we hardest. Don't, the, well, okay. we don't know for sure. The last phase is notably not hard on Heroic. On Heroic, the last phase is kind of a walk in the park after the second to last phase being really hectic. It's assumed that the last phase is going to have like seven shards or something. Though, right, so on, is... on Heroic, the last phase basically doesn't have mechanics. On Mythic, <laughs> it's assumed that it will have some. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> on Heroic, it, the... Phylactery is only supposed to let you go down once, but according to the Dungeon Journal, yeah. at least, and it, and it <laughs> lets you go down infinite times on Heroic. On Mythic, yeah. Or, uh, on Heroic, but then on Mythic, you can only go down once. The Dungeon Journal certainly lied to us there, yeah. It suggested <laughs> that you'd have to, you know, set up different groups, but it turns out you can just send the same people down each time. Not on Mythic, though. The rest of the, uh, the top ten, currently we have Echo, seven out of ten. Uh, we'll talk more about what they were up to in our next topic, but a uh, short hint, it was Splits. <laughs> yeah, they didn't pull Fate Scribe once. Yeah, uh, it like they got to Fate Scribe before Limit. We had a whole segment on our thing yesterday. Is Limit doomed? Yeah, Plot turns twist. out they weren't. They were fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's the people have an overreaction any day that a, a team goes and does splits and makes no progress. Right? It's like, oh no, the, this team has gotten so, way behind. But you have to do the splits sometime. And just like how it wasn't the end of the world when Limit did that yesterday, and Echo, you know, gained ground on them. It's not the end of the world for Echo the day that they went to go do splits. <laughs> do we title this Echo's slump or do we title this split prison? <laughs> <laughs> both, both are gonna be good. We'll, uh, I'm sure the viewer will know. Which yeah, we, we, we will uh, do some clickbait analysis and come up with the best we can find. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In um, third place, we have Method, who claimed the uh, the world third Painsmith and then quickly took out Guardian 14 pulls later. Not bad. And BDGG just behind them, a, a, a small number of hours behind. They also took out those bosses, and then unlike Method, who are Europeans and had to go to bed, BDGG could keep gaming. It was past their bedtime, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, strictly enforced bedtimes. Actually, it's good when guilds strictly enforce bedtimes, by the way. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you wish you had a strictly enforced bedtime? Sometimes I, I regret not, not having more discipline in that front, for sure. <laughs> um, but anyways, BDGG, we're going to talk about their uh, Guardian specifically in a little bit, but they honestly have had an exceptionally strong tier. Yeah, and uh, moving up to World 4th here is a really phenomenal performance from them. Ahead of guilds like Pieces, who are currently in 6th, still stuck on Painsmith, not where they want to be so, right now. So we've been talking about this, like, uh, we talked about this yesterday at length, where it was, like, Pieces, Method, and BDGG are kind of those middle, uh, like, they'll round out the top 5 world, it feels like. Mm -hmm. BDGG and methods certainly solidifying uh, a little bit of a gap over pieces being stuck on Painsmith. Yeah, now that being said, 153 pulls. That boss 
sucks. Right. I mean, Limit had a pretty similar pull count when they killed it. So, yeah. uh, Peace is very close. They're about to wake up. There's a good chance that by the time this video is a couple hours old, Pieces will have advanced to 6 of 10 and then 7 of 10 in short order afterwards. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, Fate Scribe is a boss that can die fairly quickly, and we could see BDGG, Echo, and Method all on Kel'Thuzad <laughs> before Limit kills it for sure. BDGG probably is done raiding soon if they're not already done now. I imagine they are. Yeah, it's, it's almost 2 a.m. here. But yeah, dude, Fate Scribe is like a 30, 40 pull boss. Yeah. So, it's interesting. So, let's talk a little bit about what Echo was up to today. <laughs> Notice how it's appropriately titled Split Prison. Yes, it's uh, a factor of the World First race that during the first Mythic week, the week before Mythic, Heroic week, and a little bit even of the second Mythic week, you gotta run some Heroic splits if you want to gear up your characters and keep up an item level. Normally, it's not on, like, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, usually you see it as you know, Friday and and beyond that you start to be forced Fr to Friday go split. Friday in A. Yeah. Friday EU is normally atypical. But Complexity Limit ended up going splits. I mean, they went splits early this time. Echo following not long behind. Uh, BDGG, I think, uh, also a very early split decision. <laughs> yeah. Looks really good. I think that the early splits are really good this tier because people are pretty confident about what specs are going to be good. So there's no need to save the splits till later so that you can maybe make an audible and gear something else later. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we could be wrong when we get to Sylve, right? We could see, oh, we needed to be gearing our survival hunters. Oh, snap. It was the year of the spear. A year no of the cap. spear. No hat. Sorry. No, no hat. hat. <laughs> no hat. <laughs> um, but, I mean, unless they needed a bunch of feral druids or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or a bunch of rogues. I think both of these guilds are going to be okay. I think so, yeah. I think that uh, all the guilds who went and did splits early, I, I really like that decision out of uh, the whole top ten, the guilds that did that, um, I think was the earlier you did splits this tier, the better. I think it was just a waste of time to be pulling bosses at lower item level than you could be. Certainly the first year that that's actually been the case. But... Right, usually it's better to just delay it because you don't need the items at all, but, I mean, Painsmith, that thing is just a, a brick wall of a boss. I think also, like, the dom like a lot of these guilds are tuned with domination shards and Chaos Bane set bonuses and stuff like that in yeah. mind a little bit. And so you need to at least have killed each boss on on each, on each any given difficulty once to get your full hit of Domination well, Shards after in Heroic, the week. After Heroic, almost nobody had any set bonus and basically didn't have a, a three pieces either. Yeah, now they almost, about half of the raids in these guilds have their set bonuses now. <laughs> it's a little a, bit more. It's securing some raid spots for these World First Raiders, and there's been some angst on Twitter about it. Yeah, certainly is it unfortunate to find yourself on the bench because you have uh, gotten the wrong combo of shards. It's only going to be a problem for a couple weeks, but I think that uh, I think I, I don't think it's I don't think it's unique to world first rating though. Like, uh, yeah, it feels it, bad on, in on any Twitter, guild. On Twitter, it, it's like being pitched as like it's this world first rating problem. I think it's just a byproduct of the system itself. Yeah, I, I think the Warcraft devs and the high end player base have a different opinion about whether it's okay for a system to be. RNG dependent in the first month, right? And then even out afterwards. And the Warcraft devs seem like, you know, that's fine. It all evens out, and okay, you get it one week later, it's no big deal. But high-end players do not like feeling, you know, 10% behind for a week. That is... Uh, How would they feel about tier sets, though? Well, you know, tier sets uh, have some similar challenges, but at least it's the same thing as always, which is just gear that drops and gear that you can assign to the players that need it, right? Or at least, you know, try and trade it we with had splits, tier, we right? We had sets with ML as last time we right. had it. Well, right, well, even with personal loot, you could trade around normal, you know, sets, right? There's no way to game the shards themselves. The shards are really troll. <laughs> yeah, and then also... You should at least be able to buy them off the vendor for some, like... I don't know, man. If you could buy them with the Soul Cinders or something. I, I saw that tweet on, a tweet on Twitter that su suggested, you know, if you could just buy one. Like, just by being able to buy one shard from the vendor. I don't know if I one, but yeah. Even one w would fill out most people's sets and make it so that they had at least, you know, something going on. I, 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 don't, think it's just a, I don't think it's just a world first race thing, though. I think it's just a general game thing, and then the world first raiders are also talking about it. How it's, I, I mean, it's much more impactful for the world first race than for somebody because who's in they're, a, Because they're getting benched over it, but at the same time, it's not just them. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about Fate Scribe Rokalo. Woohoo! This was the guild, the boss that Limit took out today in swift, swift, commanding what, fashion. What was the pull count? 35 or something? 50, 55, oh, was, I think. Oh, it was 55? Okay, yeah. It was, uh, it was a really quick uh, pull boss. I casted, like, 
all the morning shift, which was uh, basically yeah. the first couple of Freight Scribe pulls. And I very quickly identified low health boss, not that interesting. <laughs> so there are some mechanics as well that should be important and aren't as yeah, well on okay. this fight. So we let's have a take great a quick clip. look. This is... Uh, you want to talk about it? Yeah, so basically on Mythic, when you're moving a rune, it connects to the middle of the room and makes a line that will murder anybody that it cuts through, basically. Which would be a problem if you had to move the runes in opposite directions, right, and cross them over each yeah, other. Yeah, look at the, look at those beams that are connecting towards the middle right yeah. here. Not, not the balls, ignore the balls, but like all of the beams are connecting towards the middle. Yeah, uh, and if you touch any of those, big dot, big sad. But what Limit realized is every single room, rune, regardless of how far it spawns from its socket, even if it spawns far you know, such that it would look like counterclockwise is the best way to move the rune. You always have enough time to move it clockwise if you get there fast enough. It's troll because that's not the way it is on heroic. It is that way on heroic as well, but just on heroic, nobody actually is fast enough to get to their runes. But here, you, oh. you saw the way they were gating to get out to the, into position immediately. I see. Literally immediately. Um, and because of the, they, they all move the same speed angularly, right? You can see the middle one is moving slower, but the amount of degrees it's moving per second is the same. So you will never overlap somebody else who's moving their rune. There was also some frustration in regards to this on Twitter, but I, I think that that was like... I, well, I think it's reasonable. It was, it was just frustration at the boss. It actually wasn't yeah. frustration at anybody specifically. It was just frustration I, at like the boss's design. It's a great strat that Limit has is using here of just getting everybody in position of the runes and ignoring the mythic mechanic. We, we talked about uh, the other day how Echo had that Painsmith strategy that everybody should copy. This is certainly the Fate Scribe right. strategy Limit that 100% should, should copy. Yeah, so the, the in order to make this work, you need everybody to get to their runes within like two seconds of them being active, but the upside is you never need two people on the same rune, right? As Ever. long as everybody gets their insta, then they can all just go clockwise and, you know, problem solved. You never have to do a traffic jam of so, the lines crossing each other. So question. So they had a weak aura. Uh, if you want, you can pull Yeah, I'll pull it up. They had a weak aura, but it had people assigned to it. It's a really typical weak aura for this fight. Yeah. Would you ever just double up and just say... Uh, one two three four five six, and then just the extras also one two three four five six. So the way they they have it is that yeah these these people are like backups that can be called for stuff if needed, but I think it makes the most sense to assign one person to do it and they go and get there fast, and then the other people are free to DPS uh, these ads because uh, the ads do need to get the, killed. The point the point is like Nick's priest infinitely slower than I'm fired up. That's true, but I mean that's why they have the gateway set up right. They are ready to get there quickly. Yeah, and I mean even in the beginning of the clip, Lighty is. Gobbling the knockback, right? Yeah, that was that's cool. uh, that, was, that was actually an epic move. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. Speaking of epic moves, the last thing we wanted to talk about today was BDGG. <laughs> now, Guardian was a fight that Echo and Limit, two tanks and six healed, and BDGG said, "Heck that, nay nay, we ain't about it. We are gonna one tank and five heal this fight, and that way we will get to play a million DPS players." But in order to do that, they need a very brave tank. And a bald one, <laughs> yeah. some would say. <laughs> so, some might say that. Um, and so this was their strategy. They had a one tank using immunes. Uh, and the immune using for soaks is something that all the guilds were, were doing to some extent, in, right? In different ways, yeah. You were having blocks like stand on top of your tank. Right, because that reduces the damage that's coming in on the player because that of is the tank. Because right? right? okay. yeah, the Sunder, right? Okay. Not the Sunder, but the Obliterate damage is, is split among all targets. So okay. you have somebody go in there with an immune and the total damage going out on the tank is reduced. Also, okay. on Mythic, it has a mechanic that says you need a certain number of people in there or else bad stuff happens. That As as normally, uh, yeah, they, mechanics will tend to have. Right, so... Uh, but with one tank, with a, a brave prop pally, you can do immunes on yourself for the Sunder so you don't have multiple stacks of that. And it solves a lot of the problems. It requires clean and consistent play, but okay. that frees up an extra DPS slot. How how would you rotate immunities? I <laughs> Are you not sure yet? I'm not 100% sure what it looks this, like. This yeah. is some research that would have to be done on a bald man stream. And absolutely, that would be the place to go. And that is where you could also find something like this heartbreaking wipe from before from their dinner break. From Sloot, the bald man that we're yeah. alluding to. <laughs> so here you can see, just before they went on their dinner break, the last pull of the night. Of course we know that they down this Ooh, boss no. pretty quickly. Oh, uh, oh they they down that boss really relatively quickly after that. Yeah. At the same time. 
It's heartbreaking wipe. Really Forty thousand HP. That's one touch of death. <laughs> we we uh we procured these clips prior to them killing it, so it happens to just roll that way. Yeah, I mean the the kill that came afterwards certainly certainly nice, and every guild I think is pretty happy to get this thing done nice and quickly. If if you want, can you pull back up that uh that pull? I want. So something that's interesting is their comp. So like you said, the here I'll I'll find their comp pages. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the. Uh, the six heal, two tank thing was interesting, but they were allowed to run five healers in one tank. That only having to get two uh, purging protocols right. per so that, phase is that's so how you, much uh, like, saved. You play the extra damage dealers, mm -hmm. but you have less healing, right? Mm -hmm. But you So don't you, have to, you do less purging protocols, and that means you have less time in the fight. But you don't need time because you got more damage. Exactly. So it's a, a, a beautiful, elegant strat. Here, let's take a quick look at... Uh, so this is the comps. I have the thing resized a little bad for it. It's fine. But you can basically see the idea here. The DPS aren't on here. And you can see the difference between the amount of tanks and healers, right? And these extra ones... I mean, these two extra slots turn into damage dealers that just remove time from the fight from BDGG. All right, I don't want to make this too much longer, but... Do you think this should be a common strategy for most skills that go to Guardian? I think that the main thing it means is that when you get to Guardian, because of how it's tuned, whatever you want to do will work. You want to play more damage, do less purging protocols, that works. Okay. You want to play a bunch of healers and use that to use some extra cooldowns, do extra purging protocols, hey, that also Seven works. Seven healers. Just make sure they're paladins, yep. <laughs> um, anything you want to do will work on that fight. And for Assuming guilds, they're paladins. For guilds that reach us later, right, complexity limit killed this thing, item level 238. Uh, method killed at item level 236 and a half. BDGG killed at item level 238, right? When the guilds are getting to this boss at item level 245, mm -hmm. you don't need this level of precision. You won't need the Holy Paladins to make it work. You just get in there, do your thing, and that boss is tuned in such a way that it will be pretty quickly killable by almost everybody that can kill Painsmith, I think. Yeah. I mean, it, it, certainly, certainly that that last qualifier. If you can kill Pain Smith, you can certainly kill Guardian. Right. Uh, it's a, a kind of a weird effect of when the middle of the tier is harder than the later ones in the tier. You get you get these low pull counts on the bosses I'm, after it. I'm kind of fine with that because yeah, I don't Pain, mind it either because Pain Smith was so hard. I'm fine with. Uh, Fate Scribe was a mistake, but anyways, all right, let's let's get out of here. All right, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be it for our recap here. We'll be back tomorrow with day five. Thanks for hanging out. Later.